Ben Stewart, the uh, incumbent MLA for the BC Liberals in the Colonial West riding for the uh, Saturday's provincial election, one that's uh, coming up on us uh, very quickly. Ben, why are you running again? What do you bring to the table? Well, uh, Wayne, that's you know an important question, and I think for all of the people that are running, one of the things that the experience that I had when Parliament was adjourned at the start of March and we weren't recalled and I was uh, working with constituents, I mean, so many people that didn't really know what was going to be next. I mean, uh, March the 13th when, you know, the uh, public health officer made the announcement that they were virtually shutting down the province, people were being laid off. I mean, there was so much uncertainty. And I think that that's one of the things about being in government is that certainty is such an important part to getting out of this. And, you know, when I look at, um, you know, the fact that I, although I've served and had, uh, you know, things that I've been very proud of, I think more importantly right now, the time to um, restore confidence, rebuild, is so important. And I think that I have a lot to offer in that area, um, both from a community and business background. And I know how difficult it is if, if the businesses that have been shut down, and there's some here that have not yet ever reopened since the, uh, you know, the orders came down from uh, the um, public safety minister, uh, Mike Farnworth and uh, Bonnie Henry. The bottom line is that until we get to a place where we can reopen, if those businesses disappear, uh, there won't be jobs to go to because there's many businesses, you know, that are on the verge. And that's what we bring to the table and what I bring to the table. This election really boils down to uh, who people want to lead them out of this pandemic. Why the BC Liberals? What uh, what are you bringing that maybe the NDP is not, in your view? I, well, I think that one of the things that, uh, you know, the contrast that I know that, you know, people look closely at what the government has in terms of its plans. It's had uh, uh, eight or nine months now to come up with a plan about uh, restarting the economy, investing in businesses that have been shut down. And for the most part, what we've seen is things like rent freezes, uh, subsidies to people directly, a thousand dollar promise during the election campaign. But I think that what we've put together is a plan that really seriously restarts the economy, makes certain that businesses like tourism uh, and people that are in the hospitality business don't lose their businesses so that when we get restarted, they have that opportunity to uh, at least look forward to hopefully restarting their business, hiring people back. And the other option is one where uh, you know, those businesses won't be there and there won't be the jobs and we're going to have more about government having to subsidize people to stay at home and they won't be able to restart an economy because there won't be one there. So that's, I think, the biggest contrast. We have a plan and the other parties don't have a plan. Well, the NDP does have uh, part of their platform is uh, uh, economic uh, stimulation. Uh, wouldn't you agree? Wayne, what I'd say is that we voted on March the 23rd to support them with $5 billion of essentially undebated uh, money to support uh, both the health and the economic recovery. Uh, it wasn't until uh, late August, at the very end, when uh, uh, the first signals of how that ec economic recovery was going to be spent, and frankly, it's done little or nothing to really restart the economy. So frankly, I don't think that they're planning. I, and you can look at their track record over the last three years about the things that they claim to be doing. I mean, uh, the infrastructure, there's lots of promises but the promises haven't developed into anything that's really been meaningful. The only, uh, I mean, we've heard about things like the Massey Tunnel uh, being replaced with another tunnel, uh, meaning that it's being studied and nothing's happened. Patello Bridge, uh, the four landing on highway, uh, highway One. A lot of those projects are ones that we expect, the Cancer Center in Kamloops. People are expecting, I mean, if you look at our record, in our period of time in government, we built 14 new hospitals. We built uh, you know, literally thousands of miles of highway improvements, etc., bridges, etc., and we've committed to over $30 billion of new infrastructure to help restart the economy. So, no, I don't agree that their plan is very solid, and I think people are people are looking for a certainty. Uh, of course, the vaccine is the most certain thing, but secondly, the economy and uh, the fact that people have a paycheck and can afford to get things done. So. 
supportive housing and um, and traffic transportation uh, would you agree are the top two non-pandemic related uh, issues in your right well when i ran in the by-election in 2018 one of my very first or highest priorities was dealing with the issue about uh, both supportive housing but the issues that support or the reason the reasons people sometimes find themselves in that situation where they don't have housing a lot of that has to do with the opioid crisis which is really relatively new in the terms of both the the start of it the veracity of the the uh, potency of the drugs and I think that one of the things that I've really believed in and I I know our party we support the fact that housing is important but not with without uh, wraparound support. So mental health and addiction support, we haven't seen any of that across the province, even though that there's been a minister appointed to that. Uh, what we've seen is Cornerstone just down the street here. Um, we've seen uh, other projects that have been built in the community that are more temporary and warehousing-like situation, rather than permanent solutions for people to that need affordable housing to actually get a housing that they can afford and know that it's a place that they can call their own. And the people that actually need the other treatment, the, the health treatment, and uh, uh, being able to uh, find a path forward so that they can get back together with their families and children or whatever, is not there. And we have to do something. So we've said we're going to uh, support that, wraparound services, and we're also going to provide more support for policing to make certain that the crime that I know in this particular downtown core, which is part of Kelowna West, is a big issue. I've got uh, people that are uh, I'm a client of or whatever that are faced with the decision of whether they're going to renew their lease or they've uh, moved and relocated to elsewhere in the city. Then, uh, lastly, I'll give you a chance to look directly in the camera at the uh, constituents of, of Kelowna West and give them your best pitch why they should put a check mark beside your name on October 24th? Well I think that one of the things that people in Kelowna West uh, have continued to say is that they found that I'm a good listener and I'm supportive when we get things done. I mean you only have to look at the projects that I mentioned uh, you know besides the W.R. Bennett Bridge which I know is coming under criticism for not handling the traffic we've made significant improvements in uh, smart things like bus rapid transit certainly the carbon tax which we brought in changed and reduced carbon emissions so we are a government that acts on scientific evidence-based decision-making and we believe that we should be getting good value for you the taxpayers Ben Stewart, MLA candidate, uh, BC Liberals, Kelowna West, uh, good luck on October 24th. Thank you.